Well, he's so charming, isn't he? Not really, On though. On surface. Yes. Yeah, so explain, <laughs> for, we, we saw it yesterday. It's just a sort of sci-fi adventure. Explain for people who haven't seen it yet uh, what the kind of concept is. There's sibling rivalry at the heart yeah. of it. So it's basically set in um, a universe where the Earth is just a small part of interplanetary life. And in, in, inside that universe, there are these um, great dynasties, one of them being the Abrasics dynasty, which my character is a part of. And um, there's three primary heirs, Belem, played by Eddie Redmayne, uh, Kalik, played by Tuppence Middleton, and Titus, the youngest, played by me. Mm -hmm. And our mother passes away, but leaves, who is the sort of matriarch of this dynasty, and she leaves her inheritance to herself, to her genetic recurrence, sort of, that will come in the future. So we're sort of, and that turns out to actually be Mila Kunis on that. Mm -hmm. So we're, so all three of us are then battling to try and see, you know, you don't know who's good, who's bad, who wants what, and you're just trying to figure out who wants what from her. And yeah. I send Channing Tatum to go and get her, and people get bought off, and there's just a big sort of space adventure that sort of follows on after yeah, that. That's brilliantly explained. It is. It's really, absolutely brilliantly explained. OK, well, thank you. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's, I'm watching it, I was trying to... Yeah, it, it's, it's, I mean, because the Wachowskis, you know, they're always, their ideas did, are so out there. Well, you're introduced to a new, whole new world and a whole new concept, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. And I think m big movies these days, these big studio films, often follow stories that we know. You know, right. it's often remakes of certain things, it's often comic book strips. We sort of know what's going to happen in the movie before we do it. So it's great to go into like a big film like this mm. and actually sort of not know what's coming around the corner. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's great to work with the yeah. Wachowskis on that. There's loads of chase scenes and fight scenes and all your general excitement and, and tons of CGI yeah. As, yeah. as well. And I always wonder with actors, you know, how hard it can be when you have to, when you're clearly not walking on you know, a planet with all these wonderful buildings. No, 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 definitely. It's really difficult because I think in life you have relationships to everything in a room. You have, you have a relationship to this desk, to this couch, to you, to things, everything. You know, you have spatial, everything. So you have to really create that in your mind when you're doing that, doing, mm -hmm. working on green screen. You have to really sort of build those relationships in your brain, not actually in reality. Um, yeah. What is it? Uh, what is it like then when you see it? Because there's all put around, a lot of it's put around you, isn't it? Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it's definitely exciting to kind of watch a film like that because you really don't quite know exactly how it's going to turn out. I mean, I was never, I don't know if you can see that in the audience, but oh, they're showing stuff. But you can ne I never really, I would never really, you, th that's never going to be there. So you have to imagine that as you're walking <laughs> into that room, you know, that's quite a lot. But they show you storyboards and they yes. had some great artists working on this. We had some great visualization. Mm. But it was different to Noah when I worked on, on Noah, the Darren Aronofsky movie. Yes. They built, like, because there were some massive sets on there, but they actually built those, and, and they were sort of... They built the arc, Yeah, they, they built the arc. It was sort of yeah. ten times, you know, it was absolutely... It was the size of this BBC centre. Mm -hmm. Actors uh, often say they, they like their, their character to have a backstory, you know, so you make one up for your character. But if your character's thousands of years old, you've got quite a big backstory. Quite a big backstory. Yeah, no, I, I had to prep for about ten years on this. So. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, you do, but these the directors are so good at this, the Wachowskis, everything comes from inside their yeah. head, you know, and I mean, this whole world is from their imagination. There's, as I said, it's not based on anything else that's come before. So they have so much to say about it all, which is great. So you can sit down and go for dinner with them and, do you know what I mean, they could talk to you about the origins, and origins of the BBC breakfast mug in their world for about an hour. So there's a lot of stuff to draw on. But no, well, There's you, a whole universe, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff you have to think of, especially, um, you know, being thousands of years old, it sort of affects the way you move the way you talk, you know, you're never in a particularly mm. rush for everything, as you saw in that clip, he sort of strolls in, he doesn't rush for anyone or anything, he doesn't really feel he needs to, and mm. he kind of finds her intriguing. Something so. uh, which is echoed um, in another of the actors who plays alongside you, a man of the moment, Eddie Redmayne. Yes. How, I mean, how is he coping? Have you spoken to him? Uh, I haven't seen him, I'm probably going to see him on um, Sunday at the BAFTAs. Obviously. So yeah. I, I think he's going to win, um, although I have a couple of friends on it, so I'm not, I can't really say who, uh, yes. who I'd like to win, but um, he's... Yeah, he is a really lovely, charming guy. I did my second ever job with him, um, a, just a TV thing called Pillars of the Earth, which he was a lead in. I mean, I was I was in three scenes. I was alive in one, got killed in the other, I was a ghost in the other. So I didn't really have well, much. That's to variety for you. Yeah, exactly. I didn't yeah. really have much to do in that. But um, he was. Yeah, I've known him for a while, and he's absolutely charming, lovely guy. And mm. it's you, sort of fun to see him sort of let loose and do something a bit sort of you know more fun and just sort of you know very pure you, entertainment. You have a particular challenge uh, as an actor, which is learning your lines. Cause yes, you told us you're. Dyslexic? Yes, yeah. I was quite severely dyslexic as a child and I sort of struggled with my reading and writing for quite uh, a long time and I always felt like I had to work, you know, three times as hard as everyone else just to achieve the same, <clears throat> the same goals. So, yeah, I struggled that with that. But I think, you know, ultimately that pushed my brain, my, my interest into a more creative field. So how do, you, how do you do that if you've got well, learn, big, how, how big do script? I, yeah. Yeah. Um, it just takes longer, you know. I, I think some people can read a script in 
two two hours in, in the time it would take to watch the film. You know, they can just. But for yes. me, it takes a whole day to read one script, and I really have to put time aside to, to to learning lines. But I always think, you know, if a carpenter has to spend you know, days and days carving some beautiful chair or weeks. I should probably have to spend days and days sort of creating, a, you know, remembering my lines. Um, I'm really looking forward to Tell me the, the, even the title of the next movie is Pride and Prejudice and, and Zombies. Zombies. So, yeah, when I speak about this in England, people are often like, what is that? Because obviously the source material is... I thought it was two films for starting. So, yeah, exactly. Um, so this was, this was, the screenplay was adapted by um, David O. Russell, who did American Hustle, Silver Linings Playbook, uh, The Fighter. Mm -hmm. um, very talented writer. And Burr Steers is directing. And it's sort of it's a great mashup. It's not a zombie film in the sense where you get uh, a protagonist chase from A to A to Z throughout, and you know he's trying to save his family. It's not that. It's more a look at society and how would those upper classes survive? How would they continue trying to go about their daily life in the same way? And all the all the romantic beats stand up because you've got one of the best young you know, me. Excuse so me. hang on. A second. Who, who do you play? Um, so I play Bingley. You've got Sam right. Riley, the very talented Sam Riley from Control, playing Mr. Darcy. Lily James, who's just about to be Cinderella in the new massive Disney movie in, in War and Peace. So all yes. the Jack Houston. So all these amazing young actors who would be doing it if they were going to be doing the BBC BBC version, but you've got us all kind of doing it in, um, in a sort of very different way. So bonnets, bustles and the walking dead at the same time. Exactly. It's quite enjoyable. It's fun. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds, trust me. It sounds I, I fascinating. It does. All uh, right. Thank you very much. And okay, thanks, thanks for coming so to see much. us again. No, it's great to see you again. Jupiter Ascending is out later this week. Uh, we're going to catch up with